Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to follow up on some questions that have been asked and one of them and appointments made. And you were asked, Governor Snyder, how did this escape your attention? And I just want to point out that your executive responsibilities include fiscal management and administrative oversight over multiple agencies. I think there are 18 agencies in Michigan. Among those are education, Medicaid, public safety, health and human services, that, that, that sort of thing. This is in no way excusing you from the failure to protect the people of, of Flint, Michigan. But what I want to uh, ask, and I want to know, Ms. McCarthy, you have one agency, one agency tasked with protecting the public in terms of environmental issues. How did this escape your attention? Uh, it, the issue was called to my attention on September 3rd. Prior to that, it was called to Susan Hedman's attention. Um, let's see. Uh, on, in late June, um, and Susan took uh, action prior to that. The agency was directly involved. I don't want anyone to think that J J January of this year was the beginning of our involvement. We actually heard from people back when the switch was made, and we relied too heavily on the judgment of MDEQ and the fact that they were acting as a partner with other states. Ma'am, I we just want to know. point out, though, that uh, y you were... Um you sent an email February 26, actually two days before Mr. Snyder made his call to take immediate action. And it, it appears he took immediate action. And you wrote to, uh, and, and said this, that, that, uh, that these Hedman and, and Gravatt emails raised my level of concern. And then you suggested that they take options to intervene, but it wasn't until January 21st that you issued an order demanding action. There is, there is different levels of engagement and intervention. This agency aggressively intervened from day that's one. Not, that's not the information that we've gotten. That's not what we're hearing from other folks. I appreciate, sir, that, but that is a feel safe that is a very high hurdle for the agency to take. We did take that when we thought that all of the other steps uh, uh, weren't working, and, and we took the step that was available to us in January, but it wasn't as if we didn't offer or intervene or provide advice in a way that the statute But there wasn't a do. sense of urgency here. Oh, there was a you sense had, of greater You urgency had a paper, Mr. Micah brought that up. You had a research document, yes. a report uh -huh. from Mr. Del Toro. Yes. And you deny that, that, that he was treated like a whistleblower. And we believe that happened. Uh, we've also seen emails from, from EPA officials, two EPA officials, on, on their personal email, by the way, which apparently uh, you, that's okay at the EPA. You use your personal email and texting. Uh, and it also went to, to DEQ, uh, uh, Governor Snyder, saying that the EPA was going to provide cover so that they could literally say they didn't get the report. We've got the email. So it, it appears to me that not only did you not take action, there was a cover-up going on that involved both the state of Michigan and the EPA. But I, I think fundamentally the problems with the EPA uh, and not taking uh, adequate action on revising the lead and copper rule. Uh, you guys have a history of covering up. You covered up the uh, toxic release in Georgia. You tried to cover up the toxic release, your responsibility to toxic release in, in Colorado. There's a pattern here, and I just, I, for the life of me, cannot understand why the, the federal government has the public trust to protect the people of this country, and we fail time and time and time again. And again, the state of Michigan is culpable in this, and I appreciate the fact that you've taken responsibility, but there's a whole lot more here. And I'm going to ask you one, one question. This is a yes or no, so don't filibuster the answer. If Susan Hedman had not resigned, would you have fired her? That's a yes or no, Ms. McCarthy. I didn't need to face that answer. No, ma'am. It's a yes or no. That's the best answer I can give. That's not a good answer. Okay. Would you have fired her? Would, can you not hold anyone responsible for these actions? Is it? Are you incapable of I that? I actually will, but, but the failures that when? I identified, the failures so far that I understand were a failure on our part because the region actually You're trusted filibustering. the state. Governor and Snyder, second, I've got one last question for you. Long. Michigan has a $600 million surplus and over $380 million emergency fund. Do you have the resources to fix this problem? 
Um, we're devoting $232 million is the appropriation I'm asking for for Flint. There's a huge number of actions. We've already gotten $67 million of that approved through our um, legislature. I'm, putting I'm asking for $165 million to go in a statewide infrastructure fund to deal with not only Flint but other communities as a, a catalyst to start this discussion. So we've made a huge commitment, and I'm on the ground there taking actions with a great team of people because they deserve a fix. And I appreciate this committee doing hearings on why. To be open with you, my heart and focus is what can I do every day to make Flint a better place to help make up for this tragedy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think the gentleman's time has expired.